Democratic Debate Analysis Night 2. Uh, I think the most significant outcome of the debate tonight was Joe Biden clearly showed signs of a cognitive decline. Um, now, in a younger person, that could just be an off night, you're tired. But when you get over 50, 60, 70, um, when you start having these kind of slippages, um, the bar is higher. So, sorry, Joe, but it appeared that you are beginning to suffer from cognitive decline. Second point, uh, Tulsi Gabbard ended Kamala Harris's presidential run. This is not difficult to do, uh, but no one else has done it before. Uh, Kamala Harris's uh, career as a district, as a uh, attorney general for California is uh, such that if it's exposed in detail, it really leaves her in an uh, impossible position. She should be running as a Republican based on that uh, career, uh, not as a Democrat. Or you could say that she could run as a blue dog Democrat. She had a tough on crime, lock them up, uh, crush the poor attitude with some, I'm sure, uh, normal behaviors mixed in. But Tulsi nailed her. She said that she kept slave labor beyond their release dates, which is a, a fact. Uh, she, uh, uh, Kamala came out and said that she had put people in prison uh, had prosecuted bankers. Overall, uh, you know, the most scandalous aspect of this was that uh, Steve Mnuchin, who is now our Treasury Secretary, uh, ripped people off on subprime mortgages, and she never did anything about it because, he, well, not because, but the uh, coincidence is he contributed to her campaign. Kirsten Gillibrand had a good performance, but she has a abominable voting record. She's definitely a foreign policy hawk. And there was no real analysis of how people feel about our spending so much money on the military industrial complex, which if you watch my analysis from night one, I believe took the country over when Kennedy was killed because it was definitely uh, uh, Alan Dulles, who was the director of the CIA. He had been fired by Kennedy. Kennedy had ordered the CIA to be disbanded, moved into the Pentagon. He had ordered the end of the Vietnam War. Um, again, I can get into even more interesting aspects of this, but uh, the military industrial complex holds the country in a vice. And the only person who really spoke about that was Tulsi Gabbard. And uh, I think Tulsi's overall performance was the best of the night. Um, although I thought it was a bit odd, and I think it might have just been a, a misfire, that in her closing remarks, which were dealing with the horrors of uh, military conflict in a nuclear conflagration, uh, in her wind-up speech, she didn't address climate change. So we're between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, we have uh, trillions of dollars in the hands of a very small group of people that are able to spend enormous amounts on artificial intelligence, a computerization to make it much more difficult for us to rebel against them. So this is surveillance. It is uh, 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 detention laws. It would now allow any of us to be locked up forever without trial, um, especially if we're not U.S. citizens. But even U.S. citizens, uh, you, you can imagine if somebody was charged with being a member of Al-Qaeda, uh, they could be put in Guantanamo even if they're a U.S. citizen. And we now assassinate U.S. citizens. We had uh, the son of Anwar al-Laki uh, murdered, and then his uh, uh, sister was murdered, children, by the United States. So Tulsi is clearly going after this uh, aspect, of which is the rock, but the hard place is that the planet is dying, objectively dying. The number of species is declining, insects are declining, the forests of the northern hemisphere are burning, Siberia is burning, the polar caps are melting. All these create feedback loops to more and more horrendous things. The ocean is choked with plastic. It's acidifying. It's warming. And we will be starving to death in the billions in the 2030s based on the current trend lines because as heat goes up, crops lose their nutritional value. Even one degree of average temperature in the Midwest 
reduces nutritional value one degree Fahrenheit by 10 or 20 percent. Uh, and we're looking at, um, if we don't fix things immediately, possibly 10 degrees Fahrenheit climate change, which would mean 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the inland areas and on the poles. So we're between this rock and hard place of a, a aristocratic elite plutocracy that has every tool to repress us. Uh, and they're growing by the minute because we have artificial intelligence. So what used to take a year can now happen in seconds. Um, and this will uh, certainly take off in the next five years. Um, so Tulsi uh, dealt with the foreign policy side. Uh, she does have a good bill about getting off of uh, fossil fuels. She has appeal to uh, the right because she's been cautious about um, the Green New Deal, which I do support. The Green New Deal is very aspirational. It talks about a good job for everyone in America. Um, so it's trying to embrace many, many things. Um, and her off fossil fuels would simply end fossil fuels. Um, but uh, clearly the leader in uh, climate change was Jay Inslee, who began to paint the picture of how dire our situation is. People need graphic understanding of what it will mean to have no insects, to have no fish, to have no grains. Um, and that will end up in the 2030s of the world with a few hundred million people who are able to survive by building domes, uh, growing crops underground. Uh, uh, what the, uh, one great article describes a technosphere with a dying biosphere. Uh, plus, we have the issue of uh, Bangladesh being completely underwater, Florida being completely underwater. I'm sorry, I did start smoking again when I was in Chile. I'll quit soon. Uh, so, um, uh, Tulsi did well. Uh, Jay Inslee did well. Uh, he seemed a man of high integrity. Uh, on the issues of criminal justice reform. He made it clear uh, how hard he fought in Washington on the issue of immigration, how hard he fought in Washington. Uh, my father likes Jay Inslee. Uh, I think he would be a, a great leader. But we in the Bernie movement um, have one million volunteers. And uh, Bernie has a completely solid uh, set of policies and he has a tremendous group of advisors, such as Bill McKibben, um, who, uh, you know, show me your friends, and I'll tell you who you are. So Bernie has some terrific uh, colleagues who can help him uh, with things that are uh, complex policy matters. Now, Elizabeth Warren was able to spill out her policies more quickly, but they were more diluted. But I'm talking about night two. And then Andrew Yang uh, did a, um, a workmanlike performance. Uh, dealing with the issue of automation, unemployment, and the need to um, provide some universal basic income for people to figure out how they're going to reinvent themselves in a world where traditional low-paid work uh, will disappear to automatons. So, um, you know, my hope is still that um, Tulsi will uh, endorse Bernie and be his vice president. Uh, there's certainly other people, Jay Inslee, uh, Andrew Yang, um, Elizabeth Warren. Um, I don't want anyone right of Bernie being his vice president because then if he mysteriously dies, uh, we'll be faced with the prospect of a changeling taking the White House. And especially Elizabeth Warren, I, I, I don't 100% uh, get her yet. I don't know what makes her tick. Maybe she'll call me and uh, tell us uh, what makes her tick. She certainly has uh, the right policy superficially, but this business about saying that she's a capitalist. Uh, no, I believe in uh, people self-organizing um, and uh, not getting everything from the state. Um, but what does this mean that she says, I'm a capitalist? And why is CNN constantly touting her? Um, it's almost like they're paid off. And the other thing they're constantly harping about is taking away your private insurance. And I do not believe that um, private insurance would be banned under Medicare for All. It would be supplemental policies, but 
everyone would have access to Medicare for All, so it would make private insurance sort of redundant. Um, so they're harping about two issues. One is um, they don't like uh, universal health care um, because they want to keep their elite medical care and they want other people to have worse medical care than they have. That seems to be the upshot. Uh, it may be just for the contributors to AT&T who own CNN and the advertisers. And the other thing they definitely don't like is Bernie Sanders. Um, and so they're uh, shoving Elizabeth Warren on us. So I would be more inclined to like Elizabeth Warren if I could see her enemies. And if her allies are people that um, have lied to us, have stolen from us, and have manipulated us, which is how I feel about CNN, then I wonder who she really is. What is she saying behind closed doors? Why did she endorse Hillary Clinton when Bernie desperately needed her? Why did she have to do that? So who is Elizabeth Warren? So what I saw tonight certainly didn't shake my faith in the million volunteers that are working in the progressive movement who've chosen Bernie Sanders as their standard bearer. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.